welcome to the new topic of air filtration and uh, pneumatic conveying. Now, before we discuss about this air filtration and pneumatic conveying, let us have a brief look that what topics we have covered previously. Uh, we had discussed about the compressed air, what is the concept of compressed air, where it is being used, uh, how we can generate this compressed air, what is the, what is the basic anatomy of the uh, compressed air system. We discussed about the air receiving systems and what is the important of, uh, importance of this air receiving system. Uh, we had discussed various kinds of air compressor, different type of a classification, what are the advantages and disadvantages of those air compression system. Now, in this particular chapter, we are going to discuss about the air filtration because the filtration aspect is a very important aspect in uh, air compression system. Uh, we will discuss about the various separation techniques through which we can perform the separation aspect in the air filtration system. Uh, since uh, we are working with the uh, pressurized uh, compression system or comp pressurized vessel, then uh, the safety, we cannot overlook the importance of the safety. We will discuss uh, broadly about uh, the compressed air safety aspect. Then we will start the pneumatic conveying system, especially the pneumatic conveyor. Now, let us talk about uh, the air filtration system. See, uh, the filtration is uh, usually an essential element or essential concept for any pneumatic conveying system. It becomes very important uh, due to the health and safety requirements because uh, there are so many contaminants may, may be there in the air and there may be certain other undesirable components are there. Therefore, air filtration uh, plays a very vital role. Now, gas solid separation devices in the pneumatic conveying system, they have the two functions. First to recover so much, uh, as much as the conveying material as possible and to minimize the pollution of the working environment. Now, separation is uh, particularly a matter of economics. The more is the valuable material, the more trouble should be taken to ensure the total recovery. It is a universal phenomena. Because uh, whenever you the, any kind of economics are involved, then definitely you need to look the viability of the separation process. Now, if the materials are toxic and explosive, then extreme measures or extreme care must be taken to prevent it to escape to the atmosphere. Then again, filtration devices come into the existence. Now, see uh, when we talk about this uh, separation aspect or the filtration aspect, because filtration is none other than a separation from desired one to undesired one, etcetera. There are wide range of uh, uh, separation or filtration techniques. Now, for relatively large and heavy particles with no fine or in dust, the solid material uh, falling under gravity to the bottom of bins and the gas is went off. This is applicable to the cyclone separator. For fine and low density particles, fabric filters, they are used uh, based on the type of material being collected and proportion of the solid in the gas system. Now, you see there are various variables or various parameters associated with this that which kind of filtration media should be used, what kind of uh, power supply should be used to separate it out, um, what is the density of the particle what is the particle size. So, all these are the various governing factors through which the separation or filtration mechanisms do occur. Now, for especially for material containing extremely fine particles dust, further refinement in the filtration technique is necessary, sometimes using wet washers, sometimes using scrubbers and sometimes using the electrostatic precipitator. Now, there is a need of regular cleaning of the fabric filter when when cleaning is no longer effective. Sometimes uh, these filters may get choke over the period of time because of uh, uh, the very fine meshing, then you need to clean these one because every time it is not at all feasible to, to change these fabric filters and you adopt new one because of the economical issues. So, you need to regu uh, adopt the regular cleaning practice for to clean this uh, fabric material. Now, there are various devices you being used for the separation purpose. Um, in order to make decision for gas solid separator device, 
to be used in the pneumatic conveying system. It is important to know about uh, the particle size distribution of bulk material rather than the feed point. So, part because this, uh, this is the governing factor through which you can uh, go for the, the filtering media. Now, there are gravity settling chambers. It is uh, usually the simplest equipment uh, um, for the separating material from gas stream in the gravity settling chamber. You can see here we are having this uh, uh, figure here the gas and solids in and then um, gas usually come out and you can draw the material from the bottom of the system. Uh, the velocity of gas solid system usually is reduced, the residence time is increased so uh, that the par particles fall out uh, um, of suspension under the influence of gravity. Uh, sometimes uh, people talk about uh, the collection efficiency. The collection efficiency of the solid particles depend upon the mass of particles, size and density. Ob it is quite obvious. Now, settling chambers, they are used for relatively large size solid particle of say 150 micron. Say if you are having the particle larger than 300 micron, a collecting efficiency in excess of 95 percent should be possible. To improvise the collection efficiency of low density material or uh, fibrous nature, a mesh separating screen may be fitted at an angle across the gas flow. You can see over here. Now, uh, the gravity settling chamber, this is uh, you can see this is the basic system and uh, this is the design in carpeting. You see over he screen or the fabric material or the, the separating media through which you can separate these things out. Apart from this, there are various other devices and one of the foremost device in this category is a cyclone separator. Now, in cyclone separators, the forces that disengage the solid particles from the conveying gas are developed by imparting a spinning motion to the incoming stream so that it migrates outward and downward under the influence of centrifugal as well as the gravitational force. So, again uh, people talk about uh, the collection efficiency. Now, it depends on the difference in the density of a solid particle and air, the solid concentration and dimension of the cyclone. Now, on increase the entry velocity, the cylinder diameter results in increase in collection efficiency up to limit of say 10 micron particle size. This is the basic anatomy of the cyclone separator. Now, here the gas solid mixture is coming and then by this way the centrifugal force plus you see the gravitational force they are adopted. Here the clean gas is out and uh, there are formation of various vertex, inner vertex and uh, outer vertex. So, inner vertex usually takes the gas out and outer verte vertex the particle out. So, uh, in this uh, particular the uh, type of uh, separator, the reverse flow type is commonly used. The rotation of gas is uh, effect affected by introducing a tangential to the cylindrical upper part of the device. You see here the cylindrical uh, tangential part. The solid dust particle, they are collected at base and uh, the clean gas at the top. So, the performance data is normally presented in the form of a plot um, collecting efficiency against the particle size. Here you see the particle size as well as here the, the collection efficiency. Now, it is possible that two or more high efficiency cyclones would be needed to meet the flow rate compatible to the low efficiency cyclone. Another uh, best uh, you can say the separator is the back filtration. Now, back filtration it is universally adopted filtration methodology. It have the application as bin vents where the solid material to be collected is blown into the hopper and clean air is vent off at the top through the filtering unit. Now, here you see the, the different air nozzles, these are the filter bags you see, they are support cages and here the, you, you are sending this gas solid mixture, clean gas is out and uh, there are certain receiving hoppers through which you are, you are uh, collecting the materi uh, solid material out. 
Now the collected material usually discharged from the base as I describe through a suitable air lock. Now it is suitable for continuous operation as well as uh, batch conveying operation. The basic measure of filter size is air to fabric ratio because sometimes if you are having the thick ratio then it will not be economical and if it is too, too you can say um, if the size is too low then again the separation would not be um, as efficient as required. Now this uh, filter size, uh, this air to fabric ratio is defined as a ratio of the volumetric air flow rate divided by the effective area of filter fabric and having the dimension of velocity. The high pressure jet is required at a pressure of say around 80 psi. The power requirement is low due to lower volumetric flow rate. So, sometimes you can say that in case if we are looking for the economy, then it is again one of the option. See, we have discussed various filtration uh, tools and uh, you see that always we are using uh, the compressed air which is at high pressure sometimes. Then um, we cannot overlook the importance of safety. Now when we talk about the safety then obviously the, the, the word should be um, uh, supplemented by the compressed air safety and the tagline for this particular uh, uh, approach is the safety first. Now see work on a compressor unit must only be carried out by the authorized service person who is fully trained and competent in the compressor training, compressor, compressed air system or a distribution network as well as since all these compressors are power driven especially the electrical power driven then the electrical system. And whenever you are having because uh, the, um, th this kind of uh, compressed air system it must be uh, labeled with the danger the uh, compressed air being used so that the people those who are working are practically unaware they must uh, be cautious about uh, the arena they must be cautious about that something high pressurized uh, system is going on so they must be, they must take care about their safety now see um, the compressed air can operate at a temperature sometimes maybe exceeding 200 degrees Celsius and usually your usual thermodynamic phenomena always prevails. So you must have uh, some time uh, uh, this type of a cartoon so which uh, that beware of hot surface, beware of uh, hot oil, beware of hot cooling water etc. All these things are supplemented to this compressed air system because uh, uh, temperature may go up then the surface may be very hot and because of the application of certain oil, hydraulic oil, etc., the system may be may have some hot oil. Apart from this, people must be trained or equipped or aware about the pneumatic safety, then electrical safety, and always they must wear the safety attire. When we talk about all these things, then uh, the safe working practice, including the safety drills, mock drills, all these things must be there and uh, people must aware that how to deal in a worst scenario. Then we must adopt the some site safety rules. Site safety rules means when you are using these uh, pressurized uh, vessel or a compressed air system type of a thing then uh, how we can work uh, in and around the, uh, under the such arena. Then apart from this there are certain safety guidelines uh, and everybody should follow it. Then uh, the read and understand all kind of warning labels especially when we talk about different type of pictorial diagrams. So everybody should know that what it means for. Now since uh, we are dealing with the chemical process utilities and compressed air is an integral part of this one and all these things may be directly attributed to the various kind of chemical operations. So we cannot overlook the importance of the chemical safety. So everyone those who are working in an arena as well as those who are in and around or at the vicinity must aware about the concept of chemical safety. Now let us talk about the pneumatic safety. So when any kind of uh, situation arises, then uh, any kind of you can say the unwanted situation arises, then you need to first go for the concept of isolation of compressor from the system so that uh, it can be isolated and you, are, uh, you can concentrate to only single system. 
then try to depressurize the compression unit and the pipe work. There are various devices available in the system, maybe the piping network or maybe in the compression to uh, depressurizing the excess air. And uh, you can always have an eye over the compressor gauge. Now, question arises that how we can isolate the compression from the system. There are regular walls uh, in the system. You can either um, uh, put in a closed position or turn off position so that you can uh, isolate the compressor from the system. Now, it is always advisable to use an isolation notice. So, people must aware that some work is being carried out. Sometimes your process demands that uh, or overhauling or sometimes maintenance, they do demand that uh, the, the compression unit must be isolated. Then always it should be notified. Then with the help of uh, uh, depressurizing device, uh, you can uh, depressurize the compressor and the piping work. Sometimes people use the, uh, the concept of depressurizing the compression, but they forget about uh, to depressurizing the piping network. Because uh, the pipe network, they do have uh, some uh, pressurized air and you cannot overlook their, their consequences. Then you need to have an eye over the, uh, the compressor pressure gauge. Now, when you are performing the depressurization operation, then you must ensure that at the end of the show, the compressor pressure gauge reads 0 and that is very important. Now, see, you must beware about certain things. One is that air exhausting to the atmosphere can be dangerous because it is a pressurized air. It can destroy anything. A direct discharge air away from the unit and operator because it is a pressurized one. So, you have to be very careful while discharging or depressurizing all these things. Now, you need to clear the area of any flying hazard before discharge because sometimes air duct or air uh, uh, sacs may create over the period of time. Since it is a pressurized one and it may create a lot of noise, so during the depressurization operation always uh, use hearing protection devices, earplugs, etc., so that uh, um, the impact of the noise can be minimized. Let us talk about the electrical safety. See, we are excessively using the electrical power system here. So, you must notify appro uh, appropriately that uh, there are certain zones where the, there is a danger of electrical safety do exist. Otherwise, uh, you may experience the electric shock or a fire, short circuiting all those things. So, again when we talk about the electrical safety, the rule of thumb is that you isolate uh, the, the main uh, system from main supply. Then sometimes because of the short circuit, uh, it may create a problem, then you remove all kind of fuses. Nowadays, all the electronic fuses are available, so you can utilize this thing and go for the lockout system, means uh, shut down the, the system and then adopt the concept of uh, testing for incoming power. Now, uh, this should be adopted when uh, absolutely ne necessary situation demands that any testing be performed with the power on then you must use extreme care. Now, uh, again one rule of thumb is that never work on a powered or running unit alone. Then there are uh, uh, some pictorial things that isolate uh, the fuse from the main supply, isolate the compression unit from the main power supply so that you can turn off the compression as well as there must be no, no power to the unit then you need to remove the fuses. Uh, any extra safety measure that is uh, must be uh, must be into consideration that uh, you remove the power supply or you cut the power supply with the help of a fuse so that uh, you can save the compression as well as uh, save the various uh, equipments um, at the workplace. Go for lockout. Now, you isolate the compressors uh, power supply at the main board 
cover and lock the isolation box like this to prevent someone inadvertently switching supply back on the uh, on while you are working in the progress due to the maintenance or some other thing. And uh, by this way, if uh, an advertent mistake may create the unit to unsafe use. So, it is advisable to use an isolation notice also. Uh, so, people are aware that work is being carried out. Now, test for incoming power. Now, double check that the main supply terminal to the machine are not live before proceeding with any kind of work. You may be 100 percent sure that the supply has been isolated, but mistake can occur from time to time or even machine can give you some, some erroneous uh, um, information. So, get into the habit of double checking that the machine is safe to work on as high voltages can kill. It is not worth to take the risk. Then come to the safety attire. Since uh, we are working in, uh, in a very dangerous scenario, then you all these uh, weapons uh, attributed to the safety must be equipped. One is the safety footwear under the concept of safety first. You must have uh, gloves with you because ha hot surfaces and sometimes chemical uh, entrapment may create a problem. You must have a hard hats so that in case uh, any pressurized uh, air if uh, it uh, escape to the roof or some other equipment are there and it can destroy and it may fall on your head. So, you must have a hard hat. We have already discussed that when uh, you are depressurizing or any kind of incidents there or in case you are producing the compressed air it creates a lot of noise. So, you must have eye ear defenders. Then you must have a safety glasses because the high pressure, high temperature, it can create a lot of trouble to your, your eyes etcetera. So, you, your eyes must be equipped with the safety glasses. Then you must have a cover all or entire uh, suit. This can protect or this can act as a barrier between the hazardous situation and your body. So, you must have uh, the jackets or a reflective vest, so that uh, a, a, at the time of uh, any kind of untoward incident, you are practically safe. Uh, Let us see that uh, how sometimes uh, these kind of uh, pictures uh, having a great impact on the working environment like uh, this gentleman is wearing the protective footwear. Now, it is recommended that the protective footwear um, is worn at all time to protect toes and feet from the falling object. Uh, apart from this, uh, you must have uh, gloves. So, always uh, uh, recommended that the protective gloves, latex gloves, whatever appropriate uh, based on the circumstances, they must all worn at the time of uh, uh, working and this uh, protect uh, with uh, the hand with from injury infection that may be attributed to the, the air compression system. You must have hard hats, uh, yeah, uh, I mean that it is recommended that hard hats or bump, uh, bumps hats, uh, they must be worn at all time to pr protect the head from falling object or low level object. We have already discussed uh, um, with the ear defenders or hearing protection. So, obviously, when we are having the noisy environment, uh, then you must, uh, it is recommended that air plugs, uh, ear plugs, etcetera should be worn. We are at all time to protect your hearing device. It is a very sensitive thing. Again, the safety glasses, that safety glasses should be worn at all time to protect your eyes. Uh, see, sometimes uh, uh, while you are working on site, that uh, you must wear all kind of safety suits, etc. Now, it acts as a barrier, but simultaneously, uh, trust me, when you are having this type of uh, safety attires or safety devices, um, one rule of thumb should remember that this is uh, for the protection of yourself, but simultaneously, all these uh, attires, they also um, affects your working efficiency, 
they also affect the uh, but obviously a trained manpower the cost of a trained manpower is always important compared to uh, untrained one so you cannot afford to uh, go for an injured uh, manpower because ultimately um, injury ultimately cost to the environment or company and it is a very serious impact with respect to the the uh, economics of the industry now let's talk about uh, the introduction to the pneumatic conveying system now pneumatic conveyors uh, what is pneumatic conveyor it is basically quite simple and eminently suitable for transportation of powdered and granular materials in any particular factory industry site plant via gas stream and mostly uh, we use air for conveying all these things in uh, uh, under the edge of uh, gas stream now when special conditions uh, they prevail that like risk of explosion fire sometimes health hazard etc then you may use the different type of gases so in case uh, if uh, you feel that air is air may become a contaminant to the the system or it may create a health hazard sometimes then you can use the different type of gases now when we we are talking about uh, mm, the pneumatic conveyor the pneumatic conveying system requirements are a source of compressed a, a gas usually we discuss that how to produce and usually air being used a feed device through which you are uh, having a feed supply regular feed, feed supply then you must have a conveying pipeline and a receiver to disengage the conveyed material and carrier gas now see previously we used uh, the concept that how we can generate how we can produce the compressed gas then we discussed about uh, uh the separation devices where a solid and uh, um, the 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 conveying gas can be disengaged so that you can collect the, the solid material and clean air can be uh, rather collected or discharged as per the requirement now usually the system is completely enclosed and it may work completely without moving element coming into touch with the conveyed material if required now some dry air can be utilized for some hygroscopic material while an inert gas um, such as nitrogen it can be used for potentially explosive material because sometimes there may be certain materials those uh, if they come into contact with the air they may explode so nitrogen is an inert gas and uh, it can be used but again if you are using nitrogen then definitely you have to put more more and more money because it's not available in abundance you need to separate it from the air now materials can be transported using high low or negative pressures now what constitutes a pneumatic conveying system the pneumatic conveying system consists of four distinct zones such as prime mover feeding mixing and accelerating zone conveying zone gas and solid separation zone each of them have their own specialized hardware to effect the operation now the first thing is the prime mover it is an essential element of uh, the conveying system it consists of compressor fan blower vacuum pumps to provide the necessary energy to conveying a gas now here you see the uh, the in various part of uh, your uh, pneumatic conveying system um, like piping coupling band drivers etc all these things now here um, this is uh, the prime mover this comprises this of, com of a compressor a screw then obviously we have discussed the reciprocating compressor with the help of a fan and blower it moves to the feeding mixing and accelerating zone that is equipped with the different type of screws rotary vane valve venturis blow vessels then it goes to the the separation devices here we may have a reverse jet filter back filter cyclone separator it uh, separates into solid and gases so this is uh, you can say the the flow diagram of uh, Uh, which depicts the the component of pneumatic conveying system 
Now, for the design of a pneumatic conveying system, there is a need to identify both the gas flow and pressure required to affect the transportation. Now, there are a needs of wide range of pressure required for transportation of solids, an understanding of flow of gases and need of drying, cooling and the gas filtration, it is always required to have a knowledge of all these things. Let us talk about the feeding, mixing and acceleration zone. This is one of the most crucial area in any pneumatic conveying system. Now, in this particular zone, the solid and uh, solids are introduced into the flowing gas. There are large chance of the momentum occurs with the, when uh, solids are mixed with the gas due to solid are at the rest. For this particular change in the momentum, there is a need of acceleration zone. The zone consists of a certain length of pipe designed such as solids are accelerated to a steady state flow. Now, there is a need of selection of feeder which is essentially for effective operation of conveying system and meets the requirement of solid as well as the system. Now, let us talk about the conveying zone. The solids uh, have entered into the conveying zone after acceleration zone. It consists of piping and piping selection is depending upon the number of factors like abrasiveness of product, pressure requirement, etc. Now, in this particular zone, there are a number of bends and diverters wall for the change in the flow direction. Due to in change direction, the solids are accelerated as it moves through the bend. Gas and solid separation zone, crucial zone. Now, in this zone, the solids are separated from the gas stream and there is a need of a pressure drop across the collector. Now, in the selection of a gas solid separation system, there are various factors involved like the size of the solid, this is required to be separated from the gas. Different configuration of the gas solid separation system have been used in the pneumatic conveying system. Now, in this particular chapter, we discussed a lot about uh, the air filtration system. We discussed uh, uh, about uh, the various zones of uh, uh, pneumatic conveying system, the concept of pneumatic conveying system. For your convenience, we have enlisted several references. You can take the help of these references for further reading. Thank you very much.